While I just wanted to show up here on Instagram live, I've been in lockdown for weeks and weeks, uh, and I've used the time staying at home to work on my new book. Last week was, the, the book has been interesting. It's been up and down in terms of creativity. I guess March was a challenging month for all of us as the world fell and we sort of had to adapt to a new way of living. And um, as a writer, my inspiration definitely depends on, or I can't write in an inspired way if I'm not feeling inspired. And when, you know, I was looking at the news, which I usually don't do, but in March, I just wanted to see what was going on so I could pivot and protect my family and just respond to what was going on. Uh, it wasn't the most inspiring thing and my writing suffered, but maybe it didn't. What I wrote in March on the new book was just very raw and, and very real. And sometimes when you're hurting for what the world is going through, it allows you to access a place of great depth and, and great rawness. And uh, last week I wrote 40 chapters. I'm not saying I'm so special or anything. I'm just saying that the muse decided to come out and play and I just, it was like a man possessed. I just could not not write. And I would just, I, Friday I wrote 15 chapters of the new book. I don't know where it came from. And I just, you know, I've read about people like I think Stephen King and Ernest Hemingway. They get up at 5 a.m. and they just, well, uh, Ernest Hemingway, you know, just gets up at 5 a.m., sits at the desk and writes whether he felt like it or not. I'm a little different. I write when the muse shows up, and if I don't feel inspired or nothing's flowing, then I just put away, I, I just don't write because I know what I'm writing is garbage and I'll have to rewrite it again. So last week was a great week on the book, and then this week I am pulling back from the book while my assistant makes the changes, and I'm just reading and I'm catching up on other things and uh, just sort of regenerating a little bit so that organically when I come back to the book next week, I'll be fresh and strong and hopefully have new insights and I'll be able to go to, to a deeper place. By the way, you know what I've found? The more healing I do, the deeper I can go in my work. And I don't think it's that common for people to talk about emotional healing and the quality of your art or your poetry. But for me, that's just the way it works. The more I release toxic energy or things that I've been holding on to, the more intimacy I build with my natural creativity and it just shows up in the work. So it's very easy to think, oh, if I'm doing mindset um, recoding or heart set healing or spiritual work well you know that doesn't relate to the world i think it very much relates to the world because the more intimacy you build with who you truly are the more you clear out your your demons and your baggage and your limiting beliefs and your you know repressed emotions well what's that going to do it's going to make you lighter and it's going to make you more of who you truly are and it's going to connect you to more of your light and if you're more connected to your light you're more connected to your truth and you will release your magic to the world i think also when you get stronger as a human being those four interior empires that i explain in the 5 a.m club when you build those interior empires this is i think a very important point you feel much safer in the world and when you feel much safer in the world, then you don't care about other people's opinion. And if you don't care about other people's opinions, you write from a place of truth and service. And if you write from a place of truth and service, you write from a place of authenticity. And people fall in love with you being your truest self. You're not copying anyone else. You're telling it like it is in a way that doesn't hurt other people. That's, that's magical. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any questions. Hello from Russia, says Ava. And I say hello to you as well. Uh, there's someone from Kerala, God's country. I say hello to you. Pablo Burgos. Tell me where you're from, guys. And if you want to ask me some, some clear questions, I, I'd love to answer them. 
Give me, give me some clear questions that are interesting and challenging versus, you know, how do I set goals or anything? There's lots of people who can tell you how to set goals. Someone's mom just saying from my beloved South Africa, from the boy doing things, Mozambique, Ravi from India, Jessica from Colombia, Eb from Iraq. We've got the whole world on here. We've got Jamudi from Bahrain. Linda from Kenya. You know, my, my mom is from Nairobi. So we have uh, Vahanir, uh, Arthur from Peru. Nice to see you, Arthur. From We have uh, Omnia from Qatar. Omeral from Texas. We have Argentina. Uh, Edibo says, I'm a legend from Bristol. Thanks, but I'm no legend. I mean, when I think of a legend, I think of Edison. I think of Gandhi. I think of MLK. I think of uh, Mandela. I think of Shakespeare. I think of Serena Williams. Oh, I'm what? My son and I watched the Michael Jordan Bulls documentary. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. We watched it last night. It's called The Last Dance. Really incredible. When I think of a legend, I think of Michael Jordan. Uh, so I'm not, I don't see myself as a legend at all. I mean, I see myself very, very much as an everyday, normal human being trying to figure things out. I've got my struggles. I've got my strengths. Um, I learn something new every day. And I just, I really, you know, yesterday morning I was reading Seneca's The Shortness of Life. And he, you know, a lot of these Stoic philosophers talk so much about the fact that, you know, life is a short ride and before we know it, we go back to nature or source. And I try to keep a connection with my mortality as close as possible. I think it was Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman emperor, who said, Alexander and his mule driver both ended up in the same place. And if you can keep your death front and center, and by the way, I don't think that's morbid. I think it's inspirational, but if you can keep your death front and center, then you're fearless. Because what are, you know, if you, if you know you're gonna die, soon or late, then what can the world do to you? Um, and what I'm really trying to say is, when you realize that all the great kings and queens that were worshiped years ago are just forgotten, then we don't take ourselves too seriously. And if you don't take yourself too seriously, then you're not gonna be worried about being a legend or having your name on a hospital wing or um, Seneca in the shortness of life talked about we do all these glorious things to have our name uh, to have a year named after us it's a great passage and it, the, the book is called The Shortness of Life by Stoic philosopher Seneca and what he said was we do all these things the great rulers we do all these things to have an, a year named after us all for the sake of a line on our tombstone. And I know you're smart, so to me that just means we, we, we chase glory in the world for a line on a tombstone. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. Let's get up in the morning, pursue creative self-expression. Let's have a great time with our families. Let's smell the flowers, let's read great books, let's be good human beings. I remember meeting my friend Deepak Chopra in, a, in an airport a few years ago and we had breakfast together. And I said, Deepak, you know, what, what advice do you have to me? Because he's, he's a really wonderful soul. And he said, be a good human. No, excuse me, he said, be a good animal. He said, be a good animal. And I think, you know, that's good advice. It's let, let's, let's not worry about likes on social media. Let's not worry about big houses. Let's not worry too much about fame and fortune. Let's be good animals. Let's do great work. Let's pursue our craft. I love my craft. I mean, writing this new book, 
It's exhausting and it's exhilarating. It's terrifying and it's beautiful. I'm looking for, I'm looking for a title for the book. And uh, maybe I should call it The Terrifying and the Beautiful. I don't know what you think. I mean, tell me what you should call the book. I, I've, I've been playing with so many titles. Like this morning, I came up with The Honoring, because I think the book is very much about honoring your genius and your productivity and your bravery and your authenticity in your life. But I haven't been able to come up with a title yet. Before I, It was going to be about heroism, because the book is about heroism. I don't know. I'm sort of stuck on what the title should be. Uh, Rahul says, sounds good. Meet Tigress, love you. Well, I love you too. Uh, Sarah Angel, can life be both peaceful personally and victorious professionally? Absolutely, it should be. I, I, the new book is very much about being heroic in the world, but not losing your soul in the process. And I, I in, in, in the 5 a.m. club, I don't know if, if you've read the 5 a.m. club, but it's one of the best-selling books in the world right now for a reason. It's transforming people's lives and helping them how to turn adversity into opportunity. If you haven't read the 5M Club, I mean, I, I just, I really believe it'll serve you to read the book today. You know, get that book today and read it and study it. Get the audio book, the ebook. I mean, the book is absolutely transforming people's lives. And so I feel uh, obligated to encourage you with great love and respect to read the 5 a.m. club as quickly as possible. Don't read it if you're not interested in growing and learning and exploring your bigness. Don't read it if you don't want to change. Don't read it if you're going to judge new ideas as bad because you're terrified of growth. Then you won't love the 5 a.m. club. But if you want to honor your genius, if you want to live your dreams, if you want to be the hero of your life, if you want to do amazing things, if you want to help the world by living your brilliance, then read the 5 a.m. club. That's what the book is about. Uh, Mary, I happen to have a very sensitive nature. How can I fix it? Oh, Mary, there's the, you're not broken. I, I'm, I have a very sensitive nature too. That's what makes us great artists. That's what makes us great parents. That's what makes us great human beings. The world has beaten the sensitivity out of us. You don't have to fix anything, Mary. Honor your sensitivity. And then I'd say, I'd say manage your sensitivity. You know, when, when someone says something, when someone criticizes me, it hurts. When someone doesn't appreciate me, it hurts because we're sensitive human beings. But I think if you're fully alive, you're gonna feel. When we were little kids, if someone didn't want to play with us, we were sensitive. So we cried or it hurt. That's our nature, Mary. So don't feel ashamed or broken about your sensitivity. If you don't have intimacy with sensitivity, then how are you going to produce a great book or a great piece of code or a great painting or a great movement? The greatest amongst us were sensitive. We were still alive. So don't, don't, uh, don't feel like you said, I, how can I fix my sensitivity? There's nothing to fix, just protect it. And come up with strategies to recover when you get hurt. Like journaling, like what I did this morning, I got on my bike and I, I just rode in, in a forest, which was, we're in lockdown where I live, but we're allowed to ride in the forest. And it was 6.30, so no one was in the forest. And that's one way I recover my sensitivity. So Marth says, I love the 5 a.m. club. Amazing. Social pratique, how can I start writing my own book? You start writing your own book. Do it today. That's how you start writing a book. One, one line. How do you start a masterpiece? One brush stroke. How do you start a movement? One person. Uh, interesting M8 asks, what are my concept on Carl Jung's 
shadow. Con- what are my thoughts on Carl Jung's shadow concept? I think it's awesome. A, a lot of what I wrote in the 5 a.m. club about repressed feelings comes from Carl Jung's shadow concept along with other great philosophers. I do believe we've all been traumatized. And a lot of the new book is going to be about this. Trauma is not a dirty word. We've all been traumatized to um, various degrees. Some of us have experienced violence. Some of us weren't weren't invited to the right dinner party. It all creates trauma. Society says repress it, don't feel it. It creates what Carl Jung called the shadow, what I call the the field of hurt. And then we, we block it and we deny it. This is profound, I suggest to you. We block it and we deny it. So we have this deep well of toxic energy in our heart sets. And if you don't know what heart set is, read the 5 a.m. club. You'll learn about the four interior empires, mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. And then when you start working on your heart set and releasing all the shame, guilt, anger, sorrow that we all build up on the human journey, guess what? You get healthier, you become more positive, you connect with your glory, you become braver, you get more creative, you become more productive because we are our own worst enemy. You are meant for heroism. But if you've got this massive energy field of traumatic energy stuffed within you, traumatic emotion, and you've listened to what the world says, which is big boys don't cry, good girls don't feel, then you're living in your head and you're half alive. And yes, you don't feel your pain, but you don't feel your magic. I know so many people, they, you know, everyone's talking about journaling now. They do ger- gratitude journaling, but it's an intellectual exercise. But if you don't feel gratitude, then you're missing out on the magic of life, aren't you? Okay, uh, how do you start doing something that's in the back of your mind? Well, I mean, I, I say this with a lot of love and respect, but own your power. You don't need to ask me, how do you do something? You know, I, I, I'm not trying to in any way um, be disrespectful. I'm being actually respectful to the person who just asked me the question, how do you do something? You do it. I mean, you don't have to come to me. I'm not a guru. I, you know, don't give me your power. Respect yourself. Don't, you know, you don't need to ask me, how do you do something that's on your mind? You just exercise your own power and you go do it. Uh Okay, guys, let me see if I can find some questions here. Someone says, hello from Iran. Natasha. Natasha asks, what if you give everything? Oh, that looks like a good question. What if you give everything for a purpose and you're blocked by others you can't control? Well, you know, here's what I'd say to that. Um, I get blocked by others. 5 a.m. The 5 a.m. Club before it, bef- what's it's it, you know this is so interesting. When the 5 a.m. Club first came out in January of 2019, I think it was such a disruptive book. People hated it. Uh, Bob Dylan says, "Don't criticize what you don't understand." So the, I'm just telling you point blank honesty. When the 5 a.m. Cl- club came out, January of 2019, and there were also there were also I believe some bad actors who didn't want the book to succeed. But aside from that, when the book came out, I think it was so disruptive because the f- the four interior empires in a world that says mindset is everything. All those models in the 5 a.m. club, the second the two massage protocol, the Eight, the 10 rituals of daily genius. The whole idea that success without soulfulness is an empty gain. Whole idea of getting up at 5 a.m. You know, you can either shoot the messenger or embrace the message. And Natasha, it's much easier to shoot the messenger 
than to explore new ideas. Because when you explore new ideas, then you have to grow. And growth is a terrifying yet beautiful pursuit. And so all I'm trying to say is what, it was interesting what happened with the 5 a.m. club. You know, at first it was hated, and now it's beloved around the world because the narrative shifted. It was the most interesting thing. Enough people started reading the 5 a.m. club and realizing that it created, it gave them their power back and it taught them inspiration and philosophy, but also how to, how to reclaim, not, not change, how to reclaim the creativity, productivity, love in their hearts, power, love of life, love of humanity, heroism that life beat out of them. And then the narrative just changed. I didn't have to do much. And so all I would say to you is a symptom of shining your light into the world is being blocked, is being blocked by other people. You look at Jesus, you look at Mandela, you look at Elon Musk, you look at Oprah, you look at Tesla, the inventor, you look at Galileo and Copernicus who said the world is round, You look at Tim Berners-Lee, who said the internet will change everything. I mean, the very nature of sharing something special with the world means that you will be hated on. And Natasha, and every one of you joining me here, if you stop because you face adversaries, or criticism, or jealousy, or people who are trying to block your path, then you're going to betray your call to the world, and you're actually going to dishonor your own light, and your own glory, and your own potential, and your own gifts, and your talents. And so I want to just say in this very intimate, hopefully, Instagram live, Leadership is a blood sport. Creativity is dangerous and it's messy and it's beautiful. You know, I, I mean, the, the new book is, is very cathartic for me. This, in case you're just joining me, I'm working on a new book. I've been working on it most of this year. And it, it's, it's a, I believe the word catharsis comes from the Greek word cleanse. And this new book is about productivity and it's about leadership and it's about heroism, all the things I always write about. It's about creativity, it's about prosperity, it's about building a great company, it's about impact on humanity. But for me, it's also the most honest book I've ever written. Not that any book I've written is dishonest, but the more you mature and the deeper you go within yourself, the more you don't really care about what other people think. And the more I feel safe, the more I do my growth work at 5 a.m., the victory hour, the more mindset work, heart set work, health set work, soul set work that I do, the more safe I feel in the world. And the more safe I feel in the world, actually, let me share something that I just wrote about in the new book. The less Afraid I am of death. The more safe I am of life. Last week I got to a place where I asked myself this question. What if I die? And I journaled about it. I processed about it. And I meditated about it. And I got to a place where it was, that's okay. It's just a transition. If you look at all the great poets and mystics and philosophers, they, they, all, they all say that uh, death is just a transition. It's 
We lose the body and we return to eternity. So why would I care about death? And if you can get to a place of fearlessness around death, then who can hurt you? And so I'm just saying, you know, this whole four interior empires that I shared in the 5 a.m. club and the work at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. that I call the victory hour in the 5 a.m. club book and all the methods and modalities that I shared in the 5 a.m. club, life-changing. Because if you get to a place where you become unconquerable within, then no one on the outside can ever conquer you. No thing on the outside can ever conquer you. And you don't do it. You don't live your life to please the world. Who cares? You live your life to please your glory and to honor your gifts and talents. What a place to be, huh? What a, mm. And then you become, like they say in the holy books, you participate in the world, but you are not of the world. It's a pretty powerful place to be. And all I'm saying is, you know, when you get to a place where you're comfortable with death, like even death doesn't scare you, then you feel unbelievably safe in the world. Well, Robin, how does that apply to me writing or in business or as an entrepreneur or as a leader? It, it's, it's everything because then you trust your heart. Then you live your values. Then you pursue your mission. Then you serve the world. And if people try to attack you or resist you or condemn you or you meet, you meet with an obstacle, you laugh in the face of adversity because you just go, it can't hurt me. I'm doing what I'm, I know is true. I know I'm doing what is true, what I know is true. And as, a, as an artist, the safer I feel in the world, the more truthful I become. And I'm writing in this book, I mean, I'm writing about death in this book. I'm writing about life in this book. I'm writing about creativity in this book. I'm writing about critics in this book. I'm writing about my routines in this book. I'm writing about my struggles in this book. I just feel more safe than ever for you to know I have struggles, I have doubts, I have fears. I've been bloodied. And please don't think, oh, well, that was when I started out. I get bloodied pretty much every day. And I also, I also am having the time of my life You know, if, if I refused to grow, I wouldn't get bloodied. If I rested on my laurels, if I retired. Oh, you know, I did a post yesterday um, on my main Instagram feed and it was, you know, I long to move to the country and maybe get a dog or two and live in a little cottage with crooked shelves and books all around me. And that that does speak to me very deeply, that kind of a life. But I might do it for a year. You know, part of me wants to drop out of public next year. I, well, you know what? That's what lock. That's one of the rewards of lockdown, isn't it? We get to drop out of public. And this is an incredibly. My heart suffers for what's going on in the world. The unemployment, the death, the, the sickness. Many of our brothers and sisters are suffering. But it's also an incredibly rich time to be creative right now. It's an incredibly rich time to read, to heal. Nature knows what she's doing and nature has shut down the factories that were polluting the skies. Someone told me the other day, oh, I live in a place where we see dolphins in the sea again. 
There's a, a town in India that can see the Himalayas again. Nature knows what she's doing. How many of us were exhausted? Now we're being asked to rest more. How many of us never spent time with our families? Now all we do is, is spend time with our families. People say the divorce rate is going to skyrocket and the baby rate is going to skyrocket. And I'll tell you for myself, I mean, 40 chapters of the new book last week. This, is, this might be the richest time of my creativity that I've ever had. I thought the four years that I wrote The 5 a.m. Club was creatively rich for me, and it was. But right now, we are, through lockdown, we are being put into creative lockdown. Life is forcing you to lock down around resting more, lock down around producing cre creativity, lock down around reading books, lock down about meditating. Lock, we're forced to lock down and feel what we've been, been refusing to feel. It's a time of incredible healing. Anyway, I know it's a, it's a, it's a lockdown rant but I wanna share with you, it's a sad time and it's a glorious time. It's a glorious time to build intimacy with what you wanna stand for in the world and not judge your success by the things you wear in public like your watches or your shoes or the car. You know, our cars, if we have cars, our cars are in our driveways now. If you were deriving your self-worth from your looks or your your clothes, well, you, you know, I mean, I'm wearing sweatpants right now. I don't want to, I don't want to show you them because I don't want to traumatize you any more than I have in this Instagram live. Anyway, guys, thanks. I hope this has uh, been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Um, what should I say? If you want to, uh, if you want to go deeper, I'll post this so you can watch it again. And I'd really appreciate for all of the, those, all, all of you, if you haven't read the Five AM Club, the best resource I can offer to you is read the Five AM Club or listen to the audiobook. And for those of you who are reading it and sharing it on your stories and in your Instagram feeds, I just want to say thank you. I mean, thank you. A lot of you say, Robin, the 5M Club has changed my life. I see that every day. If you want to help me, just tell everyone you know about the 5M Club so we get the message out. And um, last thing I'd say is I've done a free ebook that people are loving in lockdown. It's called The World Changers Manifesto. I'm giving it to you for free. Just go to the link in my profile in my Instagram feed the link in my profile, guess what? You can download it today for free. I uh, hope it helps and uh, this has been fun. I hope it's been, been helpful to you and I'll talk to you soon.